Hey everyone, this is Melissa Siodakis, and I'm here with my co-host Mallory Thompson on a breath of fresh marketing. How you doing, Mallory? I'm doing great, Melissa. How are you? Oh my gosh. <laughs> we say the same thing every week, honestly. It's I know. So- I know. Is it getting old? <laughs> <laughs> we just collapse into a pile at the end of every week. I know. Awesome. You'll never believe this. So I'm on this Facebook moms group for people in my town. Okay. And I posted something today because the last two nights there was like a raccoon that came up to my backsliding door on my deck. And it was like looking in my den and watching TV with us. It was kind of weird. So I put this <laughs> post up and I said, Hi, everyone. I have no garbage outside. I don't have any food outside. I was wondering how I can get rid of, you know, you know, keep these raccoons away from my my deck and my yard. Uh, Any suggestions? And I kid you not, I have one hundred and thirty four comments just today on this one post. Wow. Wow. Yeah, and everyone's, like, fighting and stuff, and people keep saying, move your garbage and put mint on your garbage, put fox urine on your garbage. And I'm like, yeah, I just said, like, nine million times, I don't have any garbage outside. I actually keep my garbage in my garage. And people just don't really read what I wrote. And then they started fighting with each other because someone's like, she said she didn't have any garbage outside and she didn't have any food, like, you idiot. And then people started <laughs> arguing. With each other. Oh, I know. Uh, the mom so boards are bad. the worst. It's so bad. And, and no. they're just fighting with each other. And I got so out of hand and I was interjecting here and there. And I'm like, yeah, I don't have any garbage. Like I said before, I just I'll try to. the fox urine, though. <laughs> yeah. And then they're like, oh, if, if a man urinates outside, it'll keep them away. If you put a strobe light, if you blast your music. If you throw cayenne pepper, if you add mint and spray that to your deck. Well, the, then- the blasting music obviously isn't true because you guys have Phil Collins all the time. That was on an episode of Bob's Burgers. They used flashing oh, really? lights. They, they were talking about flashing lights to get raccoons to go away. So maybe oh, like know. start having raves a lot. I know. Right? Like every other weekend, maybe you just well, have like a killer rave. I don't, I don't know, know if, if they're, they're living under the deck, but we're going to rip our deck out and we're going to have... Time baby raccoons? <gasps> That's going to be fun. Yeah, we're going to have cement done because we have this, like, rotted wooden deck we need to pull out. Oh, I, that's I, dangerous. I, yeah. I think they're living under there. So so that's basically what's going on. But That's awesome. Yeah. So moving forward with tonight's guest, we have Victoria Corv. Belly. She's a high school sophomore from Lake Oswego, Oregon, and she created Pencil and Screen, which is a tutor matching site dedicated to helping the children of COVID-19 and frontline workers get academic help. So welcome, Victoria. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Yes, Mm. of course. So uh, welcome, welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how this all began? Yes, of course. Um, So, as you said, I'm a sophomore and I go to high school in Lake Oswego, Oregon. And, I mean, Pencil and Screen pretty much started um, at the beginning of quarantine. I was seeing all of the news about the pandemic and all of these videos and um, experience of and seeing all the experiences that essential workers were having. And I was really moved by it and wanted to do something to help. But since quarantine and I didn't want to go out and expose more people, I was trying to figure out a way to help virtually and to see what I could do to help everyone who was fighting for our country. And my mother, who's a counselor, um, was offering free services to essential workers to support them in this stressful time. And she was getting a lot of feedback about how difficult this was for working parents who not only now had really stressful jobs as essential workers, but also when they would come home, they had to be a teacher to their children who were doing online work now. And they had to be there to support their whole family at the same time as, I mean, supporting our country and working um, in the jobs that they had. So I really wanted to do something to help. And as 
I have previous experience as like a babysitter. I really thought that online tutoring and I had a big, um, lots of peers who could help volunteer. So I came up with pencil and screen to try and connect those people and get people the help they need. That's awesome. Nice. Can you tell us a little bit more about how pencil and screen works? Like what's the process for parents, tutors and students to work with you? It pretty much how it works is on my website. It's kind of like a blurb of like the requirements. And when people sign up, um, volunteers and uh, students, clients sign up separately. And when they sign up, they kind of give a list of their preferences about when sessions would work for them, what they need to work on. And really pencil and screen is like an opportunity for tutoring with online work that children are already um, having through their schools or just that extra organizational support if they might need it, that push. I mean, it can be really hard to stay on top of online school when you could just be sitting at home like napping all day. <laughs> so a pencil and screen tutor or volunteer can really be helpful in just being like, oh, did you get your assignment done? Or even just a piece of social contact for um, this parent's child. So once they sign up, I go through their preferences and I find people who will be a match and then I put them in contact and I check in and make sure everything's going pretty good. But um, after that, they're pretty much just uh, commu communicating themselves and doing sessions via Zoom. Nice. So, Victoria, do you manage it all by yourself or have you roped your friends and family into helping you? Yeah, um, my family has been really helpful in supporting me and while I'm taking this on, but I've pretty much been managing managing it myself and I get all of the volunteers and clients that come to me and I weed through them and match them together and I'm in contact with them firsthand. Awesome. What do your uh, what do your friends think of pencil and screen? Do you guys talk about it? Yeah, um, I've gotten a lot of really great feedback from friends and family, which is really amazing. I mean, I just want to help people. And I think it's also really helpful that a lot of my friends and my peers at my high school were really helpful in being volunteers when I was first starting up. They were the first ones to sign up and to be tutors for my first clients, which was great. Um, and my mother especially was really helpful in it was difficult at the beginning because, I mean, as a sophomore, I don't have much connection to, like, the working parents and essential workers. So she really helped me by um, reaching into her network as a parent and contacting other adults and getting the word out there. Ah, well, that, that's great. So tell us some numbers. How many students and tutors have you matched so far? Um, I've gotten almost like 200 tutors. What? Yeah, what? which is really amazing. There's been a lot of people, college students, high school students all over who have been really eager to help. I haven't, unfortunately, I don't have enough students for all of those tutors. I've gotten around 15 to 20 students and mm -hmm. out of those around like 10 of them have been matched up already which is great. I'm, I mean, I'd love to get more people, but I'm glad that I'm helping at least a few. Oh, nice. Great. That's great. So can you tell us a story about how one of your tutoring matches has impacted a student? Do you, do you have any of those? Yeah, I do. Um, I've gotten lots of great feedback from the um, clients, which is amazing to hear um, and really heartwarming. And one of my clients, a story that she shared with me was that she was working online doing her work that she has um, while her daughter was tutoring in the same room. And she said it's been a really amazing experience that has been so helpful. And I think most importantly, the most um, amazing feedback I've gotten is that these children, especially the younger ones, like third grade, even a little like second grade, they've had a lot of fun doing the tutoring because they've gotten to kind of make friends with their tutor and they're like, oh, look, I made a new friend. And their parents are really thankful for that. And I love hearing that, which is so great. Oh, oh. well, that's awesome. So what's the biggest roadblock you faced on the journey to create pencil and screen? And how did you get past it? I think one of the things that I had most difficulty with 
is that, again, since I'm like a sophomore in high school, it was difficult for me to reach out and really be able to communicate to these um, essential workers and working parents the um, service that I'm offering. But I kind of, I went from like in my local grocery stores and I handed out flyers. But I think what was most helpful is um, I got onto like Facebook group chats and I really just like was very persistent in trying to get the word out there and somehow it worked, which was, which is great. Yeah, for sure. Wow. From a high schooler's perspective, how has the coronavirus affected school for you? Tell us a little about, bit about how online learning works at your school. Coronavirus has definitely, it's been unfortunate. A lot of people have been really sad not being in school and it's hard not to see your friends all the time. I mean, as a sophomore, I think I've been managing pretty well with online school and we just have our assignments and it's really nice, but I'm glad that I'm not like a junior or senior or anything. None of my classes are too rigorous or difficult. But yeah, we just have online classes, a lot of stuff through like Google Classrooms and stuff and it hasn't been too bad. <laughs> That's optimistic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do you like online learning? I think it's definitely nowhere as good as real like in-person school is. And I mean, there's so many things that have gotten much harder with like the difficulties that it, that come online. I mean, even if a teacher can get it can be that much more difficult to like communicate back and ask questions. But I mean, in all of this bad, I'm just trying to find the good. And I've been really grateful that online learning has given me some extra time to be able to make this nonprofit and give back to my community and help people. So I'm grateful for that. Do you think there's any benefits to online learning that you can't get in the classroom? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think like, that like sick. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I think that it can be helpful for people, especially to be on their own kind of personal timeline. And I mean, the like for people to be able to take things at their own pace and stuff like that. I mean, I know I've definitely taken advantage of being able to sleep in, which is always great. Um, but I do think that the social contact, which is just so important, is what makes quarantine so hard. But yeah, for sure. So. What are your peers' attitudes towards coronavirus and the stay-at-home orders? Would you say, for the most part, they're taking it seriously or not really? I think, especially during the beginning of quarantine, I mean, everything is just so difficult to comprehend. I mean, it's unbelievable that we're having a pandemic. It's just, I, I think it's crazy. I never expected anything like that. And at that time, people were definitely kind of like, oh, what's going on? Like, oh, we just have no school. Fun. <laughs> um, but a few weeks in, with all the press and everything, and like essential workers sharing their um, stories, and I mean that's how I got inspired by pencil and screen. I mean, people seeing and hearing these stories about what it's like for them has just made it um, so much more real, and it's given, I mean, me and a lot of my peers so more, so much more respect for it. And with that, um, I think a lot of them are starting to do their part and stay inside and be more respectful of it. That's great. Hmm. Do you think school is going to be different after the coronavirus when everybody gets back? As much as I hope it won't and things can go back to normal, I definitely, I definitely think that it will, especially this, I mean, teachers learning how to teach online has like changed so much. I mean, my school has told me like, if you're ever sick, you don't get excused because now you know how to work online. So <laughs> there's always that. There's that. I mean, I guess some people look at it as a, as a great gain, which it is. I mean, teachers being able to do this all online is a really big thing to know how to do. But I think things, I hopefully things will mostly go back to normal. Definitely. So the country is slowly opening up, as you know, and kids are going back to school. So how do you see pencil and screen adapting beyond the coronavirus? I think that once coronavirus, once it all kind of goes down and kids go back to school, hopefully people will still continue volunteering. And I think that they will. I think that a lot of students, I mean, just from the feedback that I've gotten back from their their children that they're really loving the tutoring and even with their school 
like ending and they no longer have any more online work i still have a lot of clients who've reached out like oh i want this throughout the summer my child would love to work on this and they just love having that friend of it's such a nice kind of relationship for even though like a tutor can be like even 20 years older than the student they're still kind of friends and working together and i think that's something that is great and as long as people still want it i'm still here and i will still provide these services for them that's awesome there's actually a lot of people that are planning on uh, doing homeschool after all this is over so that might be yeah. something you should look into too um maybe join a couple moms groups on facebook and stuff see what those people are mm -hmm. up to because um yeah online great. school is has gotten really popular because there's a lot of people that don't really trust what's going to happen um, when school gets back in. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely yeah. recommend like reaching out beyond Oregon to other states, like bigger cities. There's a lot of people that are kind of, kind of holing up and waiting for a vaccine, but yeah, that's, that's great. I think you should definitely consider what, uh, are you planning on making it into a business? Um, what's, what's your ultimate goal for pencil and screen? I mean, I would love to see pencil and screen get, um, much bigger and keep going. Um, I don't think I see it becoming a business. I mean, I'd love to have it grow as its nonprofit. I definitely would love to keep it just as a place, even if when after coronavirus ends, a place for high schoolers and college students to volunteer and get hours and give back to their community and to continue to help working parents. I mean, even after corona Creating pencil and screen has really opened my eyes and given me a new perspective and appreciation for how stressful a hardworking parent's life can be. And just after seeing that, I would love to continue to help parents and release some stress and help these children who have just really loved the um, connection that they get with this online tutoring. Okay, well, you know, if you think about your future, what does that look like? Do you foresee pencil and screen as part of your future? Is there something that you want to be or do, you know, as far as your career goes? Yeah, I think that um, pencil and screen could definitely be a part of my future. I um, always, I just love helping people and always when, um, for as long as I can remember, I've wanted to be like a doctor and that's what I've grown up to want to do. And in all my babysitting that I've done um, throughout the years and everything, just kind of, that's kind of what I see for my future. And that's what I'd love to do. So. Well, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. Have you thought about where you'd like to go to college and what you'd like to study? She's going to be um, a doctor. She already said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm definitely in that whole phase of looking towards college I've been another thing that I've been doing is studying for the SATs and working really hard um, cracking down with that I'm not exactly sure where I'd like to go yet and yeah what my exact major would be I do think being a doctor and something in the medical field is something that I'd be really interested in though so who is your inspiration who is your crush um, who is your obsession rapid I'm fire come on sure. yeah <laughs> not something that I've thought about much. I mean, I think someone that I can think of just on the top of my head is like Michelle Obama has always been such a big inspiration to me and just um, looking and reading about the things that she's done and all the volunteer work that she's done. And she's such a like, strong and powerful woman and role model. And I think that's amazing. Nice. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was thinking about this because I was watching TV before and I was watching Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about, is that something that you'd ever consider trying to get on that show? I think that'd be, I don't know. Yeah, that'd be amazing. I am a big Shark Tank fan and that would be surreal. And I think definitely looking for any advice and help I can get in continuing grow my nonprofit and kind of get the word out there and help more people. Yeah, that would be awesome. I'm not sure, especially even if coronavirus ends, I would love to keep this up, but my life does get a lot more busy once we get out of quarantine, but yeah, for sure. Um well, yeah, I mean we could always talk to you about the best ways to to get the word out there for sure. And you know, uh speaking of that, 
So what are your social media handles you'd like to share with everybody? Um, I have my Facebook page, which is at pencilandscreen.com. And the and is spelled out, just lowercase, right through. And then you can also find more information at my website at pencilandscreen.com. All pretty straightforward. Nice. Yep. <laughs> that's great. No, that, that's really great. So your family must be really proud of you. I think it's great what you're doing. Thank you. And, you know, just... Always stick with it, persevere. You never know what can come of it. I think, you know, you'll figure things out along the way. You're very bright. So thank you. Uh, you know, we wish you all the best. Thank you so much. And yeah. Thank you so much for being on our show tonight. And uh, you'll have to keep us posted on the latest and greatest. Yes, of course. Okay, everybody. Victoria Corbelli. Yeah. Thank you so much and have a great weekend. Thank you so much. You too.